The world is changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air. Much that once was is gone, for none now remember it, and some things that should not have been forgotten were lost. It began with the forging of the Great Rings. Author J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings books, which featured the adventures of hobbits, a type of tiny person who inhabited a fantasy world, became very popular with the late 1960s counterculture and back to the Earth movement. This movement led to a rising of interest in all fantasy literature throughout the 1970s, as well as the introduction of games such as TSR's Dungeons & Dragons which was heavily influenced by J.R.R. Tolkien's works. Fantasy worlds and the tiny people who inhabited them were on the minds of the public. At the same time, an artist for the American Greeting Card Company, Denise Holly Hobby, created a character who would take her name and become a cultural sensation. The girl would be dressed in patchwork, pioneer-style clothes, and the imagery would harken back to a more pure, simpler time. And so it was that the seeds of what would become a lavish secret garden of the 1980s merchandise was planted. And it was here, at the dawn of the 1980s, that all of these nearly subconscious concepts would merge. For the time would come when those who were into hobbits would shape the toy and product lines of an entire decade. They only needed a bit of fertilization from an older concept that was already popular across the Atlantic Ocean. Throughout the early and mid-1980s, the theme of tiny folk living in a fantastic or secret world became incredibly prevalent. Television shows and cartoons dedicated to this phenomenon were continually being produced and many of them had associated toy and product lines. While many of these lines were considered girl toys, there were some products and shows that were considered to be effectively neutral or aimed directly at a boy audience. Probably the most famous and most important of the 1980s little folk product lines was the Smurfs. And it is here that we will start. The Smurfs is one of the most iconic elements of the 1980s and its popularity could only be described as astronomical. It was the Smurfs that would be the most closely associated with these themes during this time period. And it, perhaps along with Strawberry Shortcake, was the product line that would launch a dozen others. But most people don't know that the Smurfs are far older than the 1980s. They began on the pages of a much older Belgic comic book by the artist known as Peo. The comic, set in medieval Europe, would feature the exploits of a brave young aspiring knight named Johan and his foolish sidekick named Peewit. The comic started as a newspaper strip in 1947 and would become its own comic book title by 1952. In 1958, the pair found themselves in an adventure to recover a magic flute. During the course of this adventure, they meet a group of tiny blue humanoids wearing white pants and white hats, led by an elderly bearded version who was dressed in red. This was the first appearance of the characters who would eventually become known as the Smurfs, and they were immediately popular in Europe. This appearance in Johan and Peewit would lead to independent stories featuring only the Smurfs, though they would continue to interact and go adventuring with the pair for many years to come. The first story that featured the Smurfs alone would be published only a year after their initial appearance. And while the toys and merchandise had already reached American shores, the Smurfs' popularity really skyrocketed when the cartoon series, produced by Hanna-Barbera Production, debuted in 1981. The cartoon was a huge success, and eventually the characters of Johan and Peewit, now named Peewee, were added to the Hanna-Barbera cartoon. The Smurfs seemed to cement the trope of associating tiny folk characters with certain and specific personality traits and favorite activities. 
and this is a common theme throughout most of these shows, toys, and product lines. Though the Smurfs consolidate this concept, this seems to harken back to a much older and very popular depiction of tiny folks across various media. The popularity of the Smurfs in Europe had already led to a toy and merchandising craze. The toys were brought to the United States by 1976, and the cartoon led to supercharging the already popular product line. They were most well known for their tiny, two inch tall PVC figures that were and still are created by the German company Schleich. The Smurf figures were depicted in hundreds of different activities, both mundane, such as baking, sleeping, or painting, or fantastical, such as being a pirate, a wizard, or a superhero. They were even shown in anachronistic activities such as playing various modern day sports or as astronauts. Hundreds of different Smurfs and hundreds of different activities were produced. This was likely one of the reasons that the Smurfs were assigned names and personality traits based on favorite activities in the Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Eventually their main foe, the evil wizard Gargamel, was given a figure as well as two other important characters. Johan and Peewee, the Smurfs friends from the original comic appearance, were also eventually immortalized as figurines. The Smurfs were the beginning of a craze that would see dozens of lines that featured little folk inhabiting a tiny, often hidden world. The PVC figurine line was extremely popular and eventually would supplement sets and structures that were offered to enhance the toy line. This would include rubber mushrooms and flower props to enhance a potential village, the iconic and ever popular mushroom house toy and even fantastical and whimsical vehicles for the Smurfs to tool around in. But of course, there was so much more. The Smurf marketing juggernaut was one of the biggest product lines of the 1980s, offering clocks, blankets, lamps, kitchenware, glasses, sleeping bags, and much, much more. It can't be understated as the Smurfs would go on to become one of the biggest icons of the 1980s and their popularity would inspire many more toy and product lines as well as cartoons as the 1980s progressed. One of the most popular and iconic cartoon and toy lines inspired by the Smurfs was called the Snorks. The Snorks cartoon was produced by Hanna-Barbera and it debuted in 1984. Popularly known as the Underwater Smurfs, the cartoon featured a village of small sea-dwelling humanoids and their fantastic adventures. The Snorks were set in a more modern era, but it is hard to tell, as contact with humans was essentially never made. The story of the Snorks is interesting and quite involved, but it is needless to say they were created to compete with their little blue forebearers. The Snorks were a relatively popular cartoon series. A full line of toys and other products were created to capitalize on that popularity. This included a whole range of small PVC figurines very similar to the Smurf toys. And like the Smurfs, the Snorks would also offer a line of plush toys. You will see that this was pretty standard for toy lines of this time. The Snorks may have been inspired by the Smurfs, but the cartoon and toys were popular enough to last several years. But there were many lines that were directly inspired by and closely associated with the Smurfs. There was even a toy line created by the makers of the PVC line of Smurf toys that were extremely close in aesthetics and style. They were called the Astro Snicks. Where the Snorks were the Sea Smurfs, Astro Snicks were the Space Smurfs. They were more popular in Europe than in the United States as they were relatively rare this side of the Atlantic. If the kids of the United States in the 1980s were introduced to the Astrosnicks, 
It was probably through one of the several promotions by McDonald's when the Astro Snicks were included as prizes and Happy Meals. It is hard to tell if they technically inhabited the same universe as the Smurfs, but the toys were obviously meant for crossplay, as they were the exact same size, style, and construction as the PVC Smurf toy line. While the product line was not near as popular as the Smurfs, or even the Snorks, they did have some diversity to the toy line. It included plush snicks of different sizes and spaceship homes in place of iconic Smurf mushroom homes. The popularity of the Smurfs continued to spread out in many directions and led to many more popular toy lines than this one. One of the most popular shows and toy lines that was heavily influenced by the Smurfs was Disney's Gummy Bears yet another product that reached a high degree of popularity. The Adventures of the Gummy Bears was an afternoon or Saturday morning cartoon show produced by Disney that would become one of the earliest members of the famous Disney Afternoon. It was released in 1985 and featured small magical bears who lived in the medieval age in a hidden glen alongside but removed from the world of human beings. I think maybe we've heard this one before. Like the Smurfs, the Gummy Bear characters each had name and attributes based on a mix of traits and favorite activities. Obvious similarities aside, the Gummy Bears proved to be very popular and receive an extensive product and toy line of their own, mostly produced by Fisher Price. As usual with 1980s toy lines, there was a diverse range of plush toys offered. There was also a line of posable action figures available that featured the main gummy bear characters. These figures were about four inches tall, the perfect size to crossplay with Kenner's contemporary Care Bear toy line, as well as some of the other tiny folk doll lines of that time. And so not to leave their Smurf progenitors out when it came to play options, a line of small PVC gummy bear figures was also offered, featuring the main bear characters and a variety of different activities. The gummy bears is another one of those lines that closely aped the Smurfs, but became a favorite to many kids in its own merit. Unlike this bit of obscure 1980s nostalgia, I present the Munchichis. Another cartoon by Hanna-Barbera that stuck pretty close to the themes that the Smurfs introduced and popularized. This cartoon was based on a toy line from Japan that debuted in 1974 and had very little in common with the Smurfs. The Monchichi dolls were cute, furry little baby monkeys that put their thumbs in their mouth. They were also oh so soft and cuddly. But Hanna-Barbera Seeing the wisdom of introducing yet another Smurfy television show into a market that was quickly becoming saturated, decided to produce a cartoon based on the little monkey toy that put them in a hidden village and led by a wise mystical leader, yet another theme we see in these types of shows over and over again. But while Smurfs were the cultural touch point for the little people in a tiny world fad, it was another IP that really sparked the tiny folk toy revolution. Please tune in to the second part of our look into the 1980s little folk and tiny magical hidden world toy lines of the 1980s as we tackle the product lines inspired by the Strawberry Shortcake toy phenomenon.